Okay, today's lesson has to do with a concept called isotope, all right? And it's kind of, like usual in chemistry, it's kind of a vague term. Like, it sounds complex, like what does this thing mean? All right, so before we start getting into the nitty gritty of this, what I want to do is draw your attention to this beaker that actually has carbon in it. Uh, in fact, there's about 12 grams of carbon, which if you were here the other day, um, you know that if we've got 12 grams of carbon in this beaker, that we have approximately one mole of material, or about six times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon. Now, the thing that's interesting about this is that all of the atoms that comprise carbon that are in this sample, for example, um, share the same kinds of physical properties and same kinds of chemical properties, except for one. All right, if we were to take all of the atoms that are in this sample and lay them out on a table and separate them into individual atoms, and then we were to go inside those individual atoms and look inside the nucleus, what we would find out is that some of those atoms will have a different number of neutrons by comparison to their neighbors. So this is formally what the definition of an isotope is. It is an element that has a different number of neutrons than its neighboring atoms. The criteria being all of these atoms are of the same type. So in this case, we're looking at a sample of carbon and all the atoms that are in this beaker are carbon atoms. So technically, if we look at, a def if we look at the definition of this then, just to, just to define it again, an isotope is an element that has a different number of neutrons by comparison to, the, to its neighboring atoms. All right, now, as we start to delve deeper into this, before we get into specifics, especially regarding the isotopes of carbon, what I want to do for a moment is to review basic atomic structure. So the design that I have on the board here represents a helium atom. There are two protons, that would be the circles on the interior of this that I've darkened, and there are two neutrons for a total mass of approximately four. Just to put perspective on it, I put another outer ring here and put the two electrons in. Remember that your protons have a positive charge, the neutrons have no charge. The significant thing that you need to remember about protons and neutrons is that they are the ones that are responsible for the mass, essentially all the mass of the atom. Over 99.9% .9 of the mass can be attributed to the protons and the neutrons in the nucleus of an atom. The electrons by comparison are very, very small. Um, it's not that they don't have mass, it's just that their mass is so small that we basically can ignore it. So in a particular collection of atoms, so going back to this, our sample of carbon, 12 grams. In a particular sample of atoms, it's possible that some of those atoms are going to vary in the number of neutrons that they have. It doesn't change any of the characteristics of the atom except for the fact that it alters the mass of that individual atom. So one of the things that you need to remember about isotopes is that when we're talking about isotopes of a particular kind of element, we're talking about mass differences of individual atoms, individual atoms. We're not talking about mass differences of the whole sample, of the whole sample. We're talking about individuals. Now, in terms of carbon, carbon has three different isotopes, carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14. So if I was to take, once again, uh, and uh, dig up a sample of carbon out of the crust, which essentially is, that's what this is basically. All right, uh, separate the individual atoms again out onto a tabletop. What we would find out is that about 98.9% .9 of all those atoms are gonna be carbon-12. 1.1% is gonna be C13, and there will only be trace amounts of carbon-14. All right, now, what I wanna do Next is look at each one of these different isotopes and, and determine exactly what makes them different. To do that, we need to talk about what's called AZE notation, all right? Because this is the way that we're going to represent 
or symbolize a particular isotope of a given element. First off, we're going to define the capital E as being the symbol of the element. And you'll notice that up and left of that is capital A. This is a reference to what we call mass number. All right, mass number. And I'll come back to what that is exactly in a minute. And then down lower left is capital Z, which represents the atomic number. So this type of symbol, which is considered AZE notation, is the way we, we symbolize the various isotopes of a particular element. All right, now, let's go ahead and look at the AZ, AZE notation for each of the carbon isotopes. Here we see uh, the AZE uh, e notation for carbon 12. So the mass number 12 up and left of the element, the atomic number down and left, carbon in has an atomic number of 6, mass number 12 for that one. C13 looks like this, and C14 looks like that. Now, how can we use this notation to discover the number of neutrons? Well, we need to, we need to define what this mass number is. So I want to uh, take your attention to the definition up here. One thing that you want to watch out for is that many students will make mistakes with this because they will assume that mass number is the same as molar mass, and it's not. All right? Mass number is a very specific value that, that is specific to an individual element, an individual element, whereas molar mass has to do with literally the mass of one mole, which is a whole population, 6 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of that particular element. Okay, So mass number is different. It is a specific value that is a reference to an individual atom. So the mass number of a particular element is going to be equal to the number of protons for that element plus the number of neutrons that are within that individual atom. So for C12, we see that it has a mass number of 12 and an atomic number of 6. So we set up an equation. 12 is equal to the atomic number plus the number of neutrons. We solve for n, and we see that C12 has 6 neutrons. So C12 has got 6 neutrons and 6 protons. Similarly, C13 has a mass number of 13 and an atomic number of 6. When we set up the equation, we, and solve for n, we see that, that C13 has got seven neutrons. Seven neutrons. One more neutron than C12 did. So this particular isotope is heavier than C12. Finally, we look at C14. We set up our equation. 14 is equal to 6 plus n. We solve for the n, and we see that C14 has actually got eight neutrons. So of the three isotopes of carbon, C14 is the heaviest. Now, what I want to remind you about is the general abundance of these isotopes. So once again, if we get a sample of carbon out of the crust of the earth and we break it down into individual atoms, 98.9% of those atoms is going to be C12 and those particular uh, atoms are going to have six neutrons each. Whereas for C13, this is going to be a little bit heavier of a particular type of, of isotope by one neutron, where it's going to have seven neutrons instead of six, and its abundance is more rare at 1.1%. C14 is the rarest of them all. Of the three isotopes of carbon, C14 is the rarest. It's also the heaviest, has eight neutrons and uh, is present in only trace amounts. So um, to, fi to finish the lesson, remember that an isotope, number one, has to do with, the specific, with an individual specific atom of a group of atoms that are all the same. All right, Like we're talking about carbon atoms, or we're talking about lithium atoms, or something along those lines. And when we talk about the isotopes, we're talking about the individual atoms within that group. And specifically, an isotope is an element that has a different number of neutrons than its neighbors does.